BTS has made an undeniable, lasting impact on the K-pop industry and the Western music industry. Breaking grounds and social stigmas around the globe, BTS has become one of the best-selling acts of all time. But how did they do it? Why was BTS the K-pop act to attain massive success? If you've asked yourself questions like these, then keep watching. Because today, we're taking a look at the globalization of K-pop, led by BTS, and its massive impact on the entire music industry. Let's blast off and get started. JM in your universe. Konnichiwa friends, I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music, helping you become a better indie artist. I make electronic dance pop music and every Wednesday on this channel I'm helping others take their music to level 2. If that sounds good, consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell, maybe giving this video a like. If not, then BTS would be very sad. I mean, I would also be very sad, but think about how you'd be disappointing the boys. Of course, they have no idea who I am and probably don't care, but we're just gonna ignore that for now. Subscribe! BTS has taken the music industry by storm. Starting out as your stereotypical put-together-by-an-agency K-pop boy band, BTS quickly challenged what people thought a boy band should be, both in the East and the West. In the span of eight years, this seven-member group has managed to break 18 Guinness World Records, become Time Magazine's Entertainer of the Year in 2020, become the first K-pop group to ever be nominated for a Grammy, sell over 10 million albums worldwide, and alone, they've increased the South Korean economy by 4.9 billion US dollars. But how did BTS become so popular around the world? If you're a longtime K-pop fan like myself, you may even be wondering why BTS specifically was the first K-pop act to achieve such massive success. But in order to understand BTS's rise, you have to understand some history. As BTS is certainly not the first K-pop act to try their hand at the American market, to varying degrees of success. In fact, the very first Korean act to release an album in the US market were the Kim sisters in 1959. This dates back to the Korean War when the South Korean economy was struggling. So as a way of earning money and boosting in the economy, Korean singers started to perform for American troops. However, K-pop as it's known today is much different than when the Kim sisters were active. K-pop, while being a distinct musical genre, which many people don't know, is also now an industry. Fashion, choreography, acting, style, musical structure, language, and production all play a role in its genre classification. Of course, its history and roots in traditional Korean music called kugak in the 1800s also is a significant factor. When you think about K-pop now, you tend to picture something very specific. Expensive music videos, intense choreography, Korean language, groups, everything feels really put together. Westerners, however, by today's standards, tend to view that as inauthentic. They have a very hard time understanding K-pop, and oftentimes just chalk it up to rabid fans, music in a language they don't really understand, fan cams on Twitter. Therefore, it just isn't good. This stereotype creates an unnecessary barrier for Asian acts to overcome. It's also wildly incorrect, and unfortunately, K-pop acts have been struggling to dismantle it for years. Boa, widely regarded as a K-pop icon, broke grounds for becoming the first Korean act to reach number one on the Japanese Oricon charts back in 2002. After the 1997 Asian financial crisis, which saw the collapse of the currency exchange rate in Eastern and Southeastern Asian countries, K-pop acts like HOT, Boa, TVXQ, Diva, and Rain all began releasing music in other languages to sell music and and help boost each other's economies. This could be in Mandarin, Cantonese, Japanese, and of course, Korean. The practice of releasing music in multiple languages still continues to this day. It's very much a part of K-pop now. The one language though that has been the hardest to sell and overcome is English, at least songs entirely in English. If you heard any given K-pop song, you might be wondering a few things. If it's a Korean song, why are the song titles in English? And why are certain lyrics, especially in the choruses, in English as well? This is primarily done for marketing to break into global markets, of course, but there's actually a historical reason for it. English is one of the most widely spoken languages in the world, and actually up until the 1990s, it was much more common to title songs in native Korean. However, this created a little bit of a barrier. 
So largely in part due to the Asian financial crisis in 1997, titling songs in English made the listeners more likely to pay attention and buy the music as it had a much higher chance of being at least partially understood. This became a really cool way to promote Korean culture and language, while also still being more accessible to foreign listeners. And that's why K-pop is structured the way it is today. It's also important in order to understand why K-pop songs being sung entirely in English is now becoming more common. K-pop acts have released music in English long before BTS's Dynamite hit number one on the Billboard charts. BoA made her English debut in 2008 with her song Eat You Up, which preceded her self-titled English album in 2009. However, the album only managed to reach number 127 on the Billboard Top 200 Albums chart. Girls' Generation tried to break into the American market in 2011 with an English version of their song The Boys, which managed to reach number five on the US Hot Dance Single Sales chart. 21, Wonder Girls, Big Bang, and many others all tried to break into the American market with English language music, but were only able to achieve moderate success. Why? Everyone outside of the US understands how notoriously difficult it actually is to break into the US market. It's tough enough for domestic artists from the US, but even tougher for foreign acts and astronomically more difficult for foreign people of color. The US market is one of the most lucrative music markets in the world. In 2020, it saw a 9.2% rise in revenues, totaling 12.15 billion US dollars. Basically, if you're an artist that can break into the US music market successfully, your profits have a really high chance of being very good. The problem is racism still exists in this country. Even just in 2013, not too long ago, when Girls' Generation broke major K-pop grounds by winning Video of the Year at the YouTube Music Awards for their massive hit, I Got a Boy, the group was met with racist articles, boos, empty claps, and millions of tweets diminishing their huge accomplishment. For reference, this was merely six months before that same year that BTS officially debuted in South Korea. Known as the Hallyu Wave, K-pop acts over the last 20 plus years have had to face many unfair hurdles to not only be recognized as a valid genre of music, they've had to face language hurdles, racism overtly and internalized, and lack of validation for the actual talent that each K-pop artist has, and the years of training they undergo in order to reach that level. Fact of the matter is, the US is just not accustomed to seeing Asian musicians in the limelight unless they meet a certain stereotype or caricature, but this is changing. There is a generational switch occurring in the world right now. Millennials and Gen Z, the entire music industry's biggest consumers right now, are redefining the industry in favor of diversity, streaming, online genuity, and a stronger fan and artist connection. Old white men in power are being challenged or unseated. Young people don't like carbon copies and are quick to call it out, a controversy that K-pop knows all too well, which is partially why the resistance from the US audience is there. They favor artists who tell their own stories by writing their own music, who offers some sort of visibility for other groups of people because representation matters, who challenge societal norms and make fans feel seen in their music. And this is exactly why BTS specifically has skyrocketed to international success. BTS is known in their music for tackling really difficult subjects like toxic masculinity, school bullying, societal ideals, mental health, suicide, nihilism, and female empowerment topics with major stigmas both in the East and the West. Not only that, they are extremely hands-on in their own music. They write, co-write, produce, or co-produce almost all of their own music, breaking another incorrect stereotype about K-pop artists not writing their own music. While of course this can certainly be true for K-pop, that's actually not much different than what the music industry used to be here in the US just a few years ago, when the standard was to not write your own music. You had to prove yourself as an artist who could make hits before you were given that luxury. Which is kind of similar to how K-pop has functioned, but it's changing every day more and more. Known for their inclusion of rap and hip hop in their music, BTS went on a two week reality show to learn more about the history and origins of rap and hip hop culture. Taught by amazingly talented black artists here in the US, 
The boys were further educated on hip hop's origins so that they could deepen their appreciation for it. Not only that, they are very involved in giving back. After the tragic Suwol Ferry disaster in South Korea, BTS donated approximately 85,000 US dollars in aid. Suga donated approximately 90,000 US dollars to the Korea Pediatric Cancer Association. Jimin has donated approximately $88,000 to the Busan Metropolitan City Office of Education, which was then distributed to a number of schools in order to provide lunch money for low-income families. And they've done even more than that along with their fans. They're also not signed to one of the big three companies in South Korea. YG, JYP, and SM Entertainment are known for not only being the biggest hit makers in K-pop, they're also known for paying their artists the most after they debut. That was until Big Hit entered the chat with BTS and started shattering records. Just 23% of Big Hit's total revenue has come just from merchandise sales, which is approximately 114.5 million US dollars. BTS has also spoken at the United Nations General Assembly back in 2018 with the message of loving yourself regardless of who you are, where you're from, your skin color, or gender identity. They advocate for mental health and actively engage with their fan base online rather than running from them. Many K-pop idols now have their own social media accounts because BTS showed that it was okay to have, as most idols used to be forbidden from having them. There are stigmas in the K-pop industry and the Western music industry against mental health and BTS constantly challenges them. In their eight years, they've become the only Billboard 200 charting act to not be backed by one of the big three entertainment companies. They were the first K-pop act to get their own Twitter emojis, the first K-pop act to top the Billboard 200 charts four times, and most importantly, they're helping to change the xenophobia and perception of K-pop in the West. It's not a requirement for a K-pop song to only be sung in Korean. That's a common misconception. And now that BTS has proven that an Asian act can become one of the best-selling acts of all time, K-pop artists can officially add English as a language worth making music in, just like they already do in Japanese, Mandarin, Cantonese, and more. BTS's success doesn't guarantee the success of other K-pop acts, but they do demonstrate what's possible despite seemingly impossible barriers. More English language K-pop songs and albums are coming as these barriers continue to fall. And for Jin, Suga, J-Hope, RM, Jimin, V, and Jungkook, their lasting impact and legacy on both the K-pop industry and the Western music industry will be remembered for years to come. So that is my video on the globalization of K-pop led by BTS. Question of the video, what are your top five favorite BTS songs? Leave me a comment below letting me know. And before you go, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on because I'm gonna be uploading my reaction to seeing Butter for the first time when it's up. If you wanna know more about the history of K-pop, I've done a whole video about that and left a link for you in the description below so you can check that out. I also have an awesome Spotify playlist featuring a whole bunch of K-pop songs from all four different generations. So you can check that out as well and make sure you follow me there. But if you like me and you like what I do, consider joining me on Patreon like Melanie here and all these fantastic people to get all sorts of fun rewards including access to my YouTube calendar to see what's coming to the channel. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new. I put out new videos every single Wednesday. Once again, I'm Jonathan Miller and I will see you next time. See you later. I am a machine,